Um, we have a show today, and apparently we have a co-host today. Maybe not. Dad is not amused by baby's antics, but go ahead. <laughs> yes, yes, so you know what we That was say. the biggest burp ever. <laughs> so we say uh, stacking, 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 stacking some toshis, stacking your ounces. Um, definitely anything else you may be involved in, stay stacking, stay getting pieces of it, stay, you know, stay getting your portion of the wealth transfer. Uh, so that's what, <clears throat> it's a really big thing. Uh, we're going to wait for a little bit for people to come in the room, so we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll chop up some 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 small things until we get into the real uh, into the real meat and potatoes. <clears throat> uh, so for all my hope people, I hope, I hope everybody had a, a great a holiday weekend, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. uh, holiday weekend spent with family and friends, and uh, that's what we did. We just spent it with family and friends, and and, um, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we had a great time. Mm -hmm. um, also, I want to say for my um, my sports fans. Hopefully you had a happy uh, opening day weekend. And if, if you are a baseball fan in your team, hopefully your team did well mm -hmm. uh, over the weekend. So we're about four games in. So, you know, four games in to 162. Uh, so, you know, dropping the water. But it's fun. Opening day weekend is always fun. Even if you get to experience it down yourself, you're there actually. We used to go to open day weekend. Um, go to opening day parade. And it was great with the family. It was fun. A lot of fun. Uh, also, for my people, uh, NCAA, a people, Final Four, popping off, popping off Final Four. So I believe, if I have it correct, it's uh, UConn versus Alabama and Purdue versus North Carolina State. So that's the Final Four there. So we got the Final Four. That's a big deal for all my NCAA fans. You know, I, I'm a big NCAA fan and I love March Madness. Uh, but, um, you know, so for you guys out there, hopefully, your team did well if you're in one of those four teams, in four areas. Uh, what else? What else is uh, going on, popping off till we get into it? Today is April 1st. So for those of you who are doing the 12-week year and you are setting up your, your goals to achieve, remember the 12-week year, you treat every week like a month. And you can typically get almost four years of activity as the one in the background is getting four years of activity <laughs> all in, in one calendar year. So I'm hoping that you guys who are interested in trying to get a lot done this quarter have already set your goals, jotted them down somewhere, wrote them down, have an agenda. I know some of you have bought um, the Achievers Agenda by Clever Fox, yeah. which gives you a 13 week agenda um just in case obviously something goes wrong and you miss a week yeah. but um <clears throat> we already have our agenda set we were able to accomplish some great things today so quarter two day one is off to a really great start for us it is it is I mean, it's a great start it's also april fool's day so uh, I hope you guys had fun with that if, if, if you partake in april fool's day and it's really the first day of spring yeah um, so, you know, if any time was a time to set a New Year's resolution, today would actually be the day. So, with that being said, I think I still want to give it, um, it's not quite seven yet, maybe okay. five after seven when we have a few more people in the room, mm -hmm. we'll get started. I don't know, I gave Tino a, a popsicle. Uh, icy or whatever, so he's got a burst of energy. Hopefully, he doesn't. <laughs> he don't make y'all tired. Hi, baby. Oh man, look um, behind. Quit work. Said, look behind you, cause all, that's all she's saying. And Will Hobby, thank you so much for joining us. Hello. I hope the little one is okay. He's our fourth child, so these little things don't bother us. If he was our first child. I probably sent him to his room, but if he's having fun, then leave the baby. Let him have fun. But in the meanwhile, Simon gave you guys reminders, stacking, stacking, stacking. Um, you often hear me say, bailamos con Bitcoin, yeah. meaning we dance with Bitcoin. It is still doing the dance between, I'm going to say, 68 and 70 right now. 68, it should be 69. I'm looking here. I just want to get it like to the minute. 
it's 69,728 as of April 1st, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hi, dear bit. I hope you had a blessed holiday weekend as well. Um, I do want to remind you guys, I was able to get custody of my email back but I still have to kind of jump through some hoops with it since it is a business email and see what type of damage was done. Um, so we do want to still continue using the assets.arbitrage at gmail.com. It's in the drop down. If you're trying to get in touch with us, um, please do not send any more messages to the old email. I have to go through it and they're investigating to see if you know any type of fraud or anything was conducted with the business email. So. Oh, reminder, 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 Bitcoin Zay. Oh, it's Jesse from Toy Story, everyone. See? It's cowgirl. All right, go take her back to Woody and Buzz. Um, Bitcoin Zay's book is anticipated to come out on Juneteenth. If you guys need any type of information, want to know how you can do a pre-sale or get your hands on this book, you can email us at assets.arbitrage at gmail.com and we will send you the information on how to get Zay's book. One of the reasons, um, one of the many reasons we are also really, really pushing for you guys to get his book is because he has a whole chapter on how to earn Bitcoin yeah. yes. without having to purchase it. A lot of the suggestions in the book are family oriented, mm -hmm. meaning that if you have young ones at home, they can also get involved, which is what Bitcoin is all about, right? Um, the having party. So Stacy Herbert is sponsoring a having party in El Salvador. Yeah. Wish I could be there. Wish I could be there. Um, baby, go put your, okay, mommy's going to, because we yeah. got to start the show, okay? Yeah. All right, so go ahead, go play. You can run around. Yeah. Um, she's having a having party in El Salvador, big resort. The having party's been sold out. So we do want to kind of support that in spirit for those of us who are able to. I believe the having party's Friday, April 5th. April 5th, yeah. And um, we're in Mexico, so we're going to try to maybe do something this weekend ourselves. I'm off on Thursday and Friday. So I'm hoping that maybe we as a family can have our own little having party and um, we can go on and support what Bitcoin <coughs> is to do. Yeah, it is. We're always doing um, mindset shifts, great mindset shifts. And forgive me, Mr. Twitter. There was a gentleman on Twitter who posted it and I meant to write his name down. And when I went to write his name down by then, my feed had refreshed. But he had a great saying and he said, don't look at it as buying at the top. Just look at it as buying at a future dip concerning yeah. Bitcoin. And I think that's a great way to look at it because Bitcoin has no top. We can't fault people for buying yeah. at the top if it's really just a future dip. Yeah, the top is going to be whatever, 70, what, two, three, three, so we're right there. Um, but that top is going to be a future dip. Yeah, because we, we, if you've been here long enough, there was a top that was, you know, 6,500, 60, you know, and then you oh, know, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're like, oh, you're mm -hmm. and then the top was 10,000. Remember, we couldn't, be, you guys remember, we couldn't beat 10,000. Yeah. We couldn't break through 10,000 forever. And you're like, ah, oh, then you brought it at 10,000 and then bang, bang, went back down. You know, just, man, it, we've been through these cycles, man. And you know, the real Bitcoiners, we've been through the cycles. We know what it's like. So um, shout out to Bitcoin Chris and Bitcoin Shango. Bitcoin Chris, the homie. I can't What's remember up? which one of Bitcoin you guys Shango. posted it. Might have been Bitcoin Shango, um, who's probably going to be joining us shortly. Had posted every single price point of Bitcoin for Easter every year. I think since like 2012. Yeah, that was that was incredible. So um, shout out to them because. We have come a long way, baby. Let me tell you. It's been a long, it's been a long, it's been a long journey, but and we still got a long way to go. So you know, that's how it is. Certain things don't concern me. Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> um, I want to shout out T. Will Line Man for Hire. Always asking you guys and encouraging you guys to smash those likes. We Thank appreciate you. all of the encouragement you guys give us as a family, as our content cousins, as our supporters, as our audience. We really, really appreciate you guys so much. We got about 22 people in the room. I yeah, think that's a great round number. I also want to shout out our longest supporter. 
I will yeah. remember you rocking in a rocking chair as a little old bitty Let Freedom Ring. You have been with us the longest. Yeah, you've been very long. And we really appreciate your solid support. We really yes, appreciate indeed. you. Yeah. All, All right, right, baby, let's hit them with it. All right, let's go in. So we're going to go in today. We're going to go over a book review. Yeah, it's a book that uh, we read and we think is a, it's a very helpful book. And we're just going to hit some highlights of the book and, and circle it back around to, to life and and Bitcoin, right? Life and Bitcoin. Life and Bitcoin. That's all that there is, right? Life and Bitcoin. That's so, it. <laughs> it's called the. Uh, it is a book. It's by the author Robert Green. You guys are familiar with him. We did a show him about he, his his most notable book is the Forty Eight Laws of Power. Yes. So we did a show about that. We went over the Forty Eight Laws of Power. Uh, so this is another book that came out in two thousand eighteen, I believe. It is called The Laws of Human Nature. Laws of human nature. So we're going to go over uh, some of the laws of human nature and how how um, how they act on us and the way we think as far as investing in uh, generational wealth building. Uh, so I'll give you a brief summary of this, and then we'll get onto it. So the laws of human nature. Excuse me. By Robert Greene is a guide to understanding human behavior and using this knowledgeable to tool to improve the relationships between career and personal growth. And so let's get into it. So it's very important that you guys find a way to add personal development to your repertoire. Yes. Um, if you could just read at least one productivity book per month, you'll see how your life will really change your perceptions of things. This was a great book that Simon had found. We've been listening to his lectures during the day while we work. Yeah. Um, Robert Green? Yes. He specializes in, in a sense, like human psychology, almost anthropological, right? So the study of humans and how they think, how they operate, how they behave. And these insights aren't just for us in the Bitcoin community. It also gives us good insight into those who are not a part of the Bitcoin community yes. and who we seem to have like Enmity, a little bit man. of push yeah. and enmity, yeah. a little um, angst, a little anguish with. Um, yeah. So he's going to kind of go into it now. I want to shout out Mo. Thank you so much for um, joining the, the live. We're so happy to have you here. So Welcome. let's go number one, number one. So, oh boy, this is so small. We are all prone to irrational behavior. So irrational behavior. Irrational behavior. Okay. So how does that, how, how does that apply? Let his hands. Let his hands. Let his hands. Right? So you get people and they buy whatever. They buy high and sell low and get upset, you know, with the rest of the Bitcoiners, right? <laughs> you know, why you get upset with us? Because you bought at this price and you got, you had irrational behavior and you sold when it dipped and you got scared, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't just, like we told you, ride it out, have low time preference. People in the Bitcoin community who are, who are down and OGs, we know have low time preference ride it out don't have irrational behavior don't sit there and watch the uh price all day long and you're like oh no no it went down five percent just no no stop it stop it that's not that's not what we're here for right mm -hmm. we're here to this is for generational things and this is also <clears throat> you know it, it, it like you said it's what is it it is Real estate and cyberspace. Mm -hmm. It is people are using it's a it. Commodity. It's commodity. People a are using high it, asset class. People are using it for treasury reserve assets. Yes. People are making it legal, legal currency, legal tender in their country. So settle down. But people still make irrational decisions. They get scared. They jump into space new. They don't understand what they're buying. They think they can get a flip here, here. It, it drops. They get scared. They sell for a loss. I mean, and then we got to hear them you know, uh, complaining all the time. And so uh, irrational behavior, anything you want to say about irrational behavior? So irrational behavior is also your non-coiners who have a <laughs> unreasonable trust in both the United States government and its promissory notes, right? When you're talking to the average people, and a lot of times irrational behavior just comes from sheer ignorance. Yes. Right? They're not aware of how things work. They don't understand what to do. They don't take the time and have the patience to sit and study it in order to make the decisions, the rational decisions they need to make 
in order to progress. But can, can I, I didn't not to mean to cut your wisdom, my beautiful wife, mm -hmm. not to cut your wisdom, but we just seen a post not too long ago from um, the OG Michael Saylor. He says, if you haven't studied Bitcoin for at least a hundred hours, don't talk to him. Don't talk to him. <laughs> They're like, you don't not get an audience with Michael Saylor. Right, you know. If it, you don't have 100 you know, plus hours. You understand what Bitcoin is. We are OGs in the game. You know, but you, you can start early. You know, everybody says, get the Bitcoin standard, right? Mm -hmm. And read it. Read the Bitcoin standard. Understand that. Study it. Before you start coming in here banging read the on the white people. paper. <laughs> well, man, Do all of the elementary paper. stuff that Anything. needs to be done in order to make the decisions that need to be made. Again, in 2024, it makes me like grind my teeth a little bit when people are asking what is Bitcoin in 2024. There are probably hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of hours now of education on Bitcoin, lectures, podcasts, animations, papers, books, articles, right? There's probably millions of hours at this point in Bitcoin education. So, you know, when we talk about irrationality and the human nature of irrationality, it is likely to stem, its root is typically in sheer ignorance. It's also why you guys are frustrated with the people that you talk to, with the people that you are engaging, with the people that you are coming into contact with who aren't listening to you, yeah. <laughs> um, think they know better. Many of them think they know better. Many of them think like, no, 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 I'm safe with my dollar because they don't understand A, what fiat currency is versus this high asset class, this commodity. B, they don't understand what type of trouble the U.S. dollar is in because they don't do their homework. They're not doing their global current affairs research. They are a lot of times interested in, I call it bread and circus. So, you know, we're just kind of outlining today yeah, some human nature and, and maybe how to kind of deal with it. Yeah, and remember, remember rationality will, they will be rooted uh, in fears sometimes, Most right? Of the time. So you have some fear about what may happen, and and, and so um, that, that that is one of the laws of human nature. Two, right? Mm -hmm. Let's let's be honest. For those who are ignorant about Bitcoin, the propaganda in the United States is horrible for it, right? So if you didn't know what it was, the little bit that you have been getting via osmosis, right? The one that you just kind of been absorbing. It's typically bad information, yeah. a negative spotlight on Bitcoin, the fear, the uncertainty, the doubt that goes with it due to its volatility. I tell you guys all the time, right, when you go on Google and it's red, that is to elicit a fear in you. There yeah. is a lack there. There's some scarcity happening. And when you actually look at the reality of Bitcoin, we showed you do the year chart, do five year chart, do the max chart, you can see how much abundance is absolutely there yeah. and present and what the actual reality is. And a lot of people don't take time to do that. So not only is irrationality rooted in fear, right? Irrationality is also rooted in a high time preference. These people are typically not patient, they're impatient, they're impetuous. They are defensive. They are. Um, oh yeah, we'll get on that. And they're really defensive about what they know versus what they don't know. No one ever wants to appear ignorant or or silly or stupid or like you know they don't know something. So even in their uncertainty, instead of just being honest and humble and you know, please let me sit down and listen to what you have to say about this or let me take the time to research this thing before I form an opinion on it. We now live in a nation where people have platforms where they can form opinions about things they know absolutely nothing about. Apparently it's some new God-given right that came along with social media and that's what we have. I just want to read. Okay, go ahead. I forget to the MO said, I don't want to sell my Bitcoin. I'm holding it for my kids and grandkids. MO, that's exactly what we're doing. Right, and not even our kids, they'll be fine while we're here, but our grandchildren, we want them to, they'll be living in a world where they have Bitcoin, they will absolutely have access to a lot of it. Um, but, you know, I always quote the Jay-Z line, like Simon and I, we got mouths to feed till they put flowers on me. 
you know, and, and so it's our responsibility to kind of get these things going. Mo, every crypto I buy, I read the white paper, which takes patience. Thank you. Thank Research. You for, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Because <laughs> that is what needs to be done. Yes. Thank A you. lot of people like to watch podcasts and they listen to very intelligent people say very intelligent things. And what do they like to do? They like to repeat and regurgitate those very intelligent things spoken by those very intelligent people. And once you sit down and you have a conversation with them, you can very clearly, visibly, and easily see that they do not have an understanding and that points are being regurgitated. They are um, emulating. Well, and it's a good start, right? It's better than nothing. Yeah, and um, shout out to Bitcoin Chris, because I've seen that tweet you posted, was it yesterday? Either yesterday or the day before. About uh, new people in the space. Yeah, he doesn't want to hear from new people. He doesn't want to hear from new people in the space. Right, I, I feel think, you in that. I, I feel, feel like it was in context to the Michael Saylor post I feel, I feel about 100 you hours. I feel you. Because I saw Michael Saylor's post a little bit after that. So yeah. I said maybe Bitcoin Chris came across that and had the same thought. Like, yeah, if you a noob, you don't talk to me. You yeah, don't even talk to me. Don't even talk to me. <laughs> Um, can you guys look at the research on how long it takes for generational wealth to be drained? They actually oh, had a stat on that. Wow. It's lost in one generation, it's isn't it? It's lost in one generation. It takes a, three to yeah. actually, um, now they never give you a number, but they say it takes three to actually establish and typically. You say generally, it, like yeah. across, like not, we're not talking about high level people who keep yeah. moving across like the Fords and yeah. JP Morgan Chase. Because they've had multiple generations yeah. to do it. But yeah. I do have a little Just anecdote. normal people, like if, like if your generational wealth was, you left your children a house and um, life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. um, oh, <laughs> over, um, yeah, yeah, over one generation, it will be lost. It's, it's what the study said. It's for us, um, what would you call us, uh, middle class people, mm -hmm. upper middle class, stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's lost in one generation, which is quite unfortunate. So you have to do general ways, general, general, general. Help you trying to say generational? Generational wealth planning. Mm -hmm. he, he's, he's got me confused. General ways planning with your family. Legacy planning. Legacy planning. So they know what to do. You know, if you leave them a house and, 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 and a life insurance policy, which is basically, you know, kind of what you see. Uh, you have to tell them what to do. You know, if you leave them 50,000, 50,000 is not a lot, but you can do something with 50,000 if you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, 50,000 is going to go away real quick. And then so um, with, the, with your, with your uh, protein, with your family left for you and worked their whole life for, it's gone that quick. You go buy a car and, and, and waste it on something, it's gone, right? You will see uh, if you guys go back into the, uh, into the crates, you see Master P, his uncle left him 50000 right? I thought it was 100000 Okay, and somewhere in that range, and he started No Limit Records. And then, boom, look what he built from what his uncle left him. Mm -hmm. But that's not, that doesn't happen all the time. No. Nope. Um, that, that, that's it. He's like, a, you know, he's a way out And he got left. It didn't get left to see murder. Like, I don't know what the story is, but it got I don't left. know that story. I, he probably knew that you were the responsible one, and he was right. Well, he was older, yeah, but... He was right. He was right. He was right. He knew he was, he knew he was doing it. Well, 50K isn't generational wealth today. At one point, it was. I'm going to tell you guys a little anecdotal story. And I saw this in one of the historic pages on Facebook mm. about my girlfriend. When I tell the story, you'll know who I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Who's that? So in 1951, her this is a girlfriend I worked with um, at the hospital I used to work at Cincinnati with. Her grandfather in 1951 and his wife opened up, I think it was like a heating company. It was a very small company, kind of mom and pops. And they were able to kind of scale up, not much, but enough for the 50s. And their son took it over, which is my girlfriend's father. And he turned it into this massive HVAC corporation that spans over, I think, three states now. And his sons are now involved in it. Obviously, when he passes away, God forbid, they will take over and they have sons. So right now we're already on the third generation for them. The company does so well that because she doesn't work for the company, she does get an annuity as one of the daughters. It's a fairly large family too. I think it were five children. 
So she gets an annuity and every year the annuity is about enough for her to pay off her home, whatever that would have been back then moving forward. And she always gets the annuity um, almost like a payout. Yeah. And she does not have to work there one day, right? So this is the, the legacy planning. This is the generational wealth we're talking about. And again, their sons, generation number four, have three states of companies HBAC companies to run, and hopefully they will continue to scale it up and so on and so forth. And that's just a regular hometown American family from Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, and so you know that doesn't happen often, but then we're glad to see that it is happening there. Hi, cousin Rue. What's up, Rue? What's up? And I'm glad you put the um, you put your podcast there. That's a good idea. Like, make sure you do it so that um, when I run through support your content, cousins, I have everything up front for you guys. Um, hold on, I just want to. No, oh, you can take your time. Uh, Mo said, "There's a book called ISO for Dummies." It's a really good book. I know, I think people don't like, there's something about the title, such and such for dummies, but those are some of the best, most well-written, concise, easily understandable books that they make. Uh -huh. Don't be afraid if you see that big yellow book uh -huh. that says whatever subject for dummies, that's the book to kind of go to to get your feet wet. Uh -huh. it's, it does it in late, it, no matter how technical it is, it's clear, concise, and easily understandable in layman terms. And yeah. you really, really, really can get some good breath and depth from those books. So, yeah. Mo, you're absolutely right about that. T, T. Will Line Man for Hire said, that's why I asked, because most people can't do it no matter how hard they try. 50,000 isn't generational wealth. But I'm going to tell you what the breakdown is, T. Will Line Man for Hire. The problem is, especially in our community, is the education isn't there. No one sits down with these children. The nation builders are absent emotionally, physically, intellectually. They are really just reacting to life, right? I'm not going to get in on the whole single family situation because that's already a heightened level of yeah. just surviving. You're not thriving. But the money gets lost, squandered, misappropriated, whatever terms you want to use because the education isn't there. When you look at legacy families, and you guys can see this from just watching a little bit of, what's the name, reality television. They are taught since toddlers where to go, what to do, who to eat. This is who your resources are. These are what your resources are. You always have options. They talk to their children. I don't care if they're great parents or not, but your, your Donald Trumps, et cetera, they always let their children know that the world is your oyster. You have the options. This is how we manage money. This is how you protect it. This is how you make a bag. This is who you go to when you need help. You want to do a business deal or you want to get in on something? Let me introduce you to such and such, right? They got the good old boy network. We don't do that. Yes, we, we do not do. sit down and teach. We do. Simon Family does. We Let do. me make that clear. Yeah. But we as a community, we don't sit down with our children and say, let me teach you how to budget a household. Let me teach you how to budget a little bit of money so that you have enough money to do what you need to do. Let me show you what wealth looks like. Let me show you how not to squander wealth. Let me show you how to protect your wealth. This is what you're going to do with what the nest egg that we've created for you. We don't have those conversations in the black community. Yeah, and just, and, 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 and I, didn't, I didn't see who said what, uh, about $50,000 being. That was T. Will Line Man for Hype. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, if you zoom out, like we say in Bitcoin, you look at the whole world, $50,000 puts you in that top, um, top 75th percentile, at least. Right? So $50,000, if that's your wealth around the world, you are a wealthy person. Right. You are uh, upper, what do you say, upper middle class, if not You're wealthy. upper poor, yeah. according to new statistics. So, we're upper poor. So take, so, <laughs> so take that, take your 75000 and, and go to Panama City. Panama, you know. And then, oh, now all of a sudden, baby, you get treated different. $75,000 in the Midwest, right? Yeah, 75000 isn't going anywhere in New York City, Manhattan. Well, no, what I'm saying, but it, it, it's, it's, it's static, though. It's not fifty thousand a year. It's static. It's what you got. You're saying it's the fifty. But I'm saying it's even static. with that, if you went to Ohio, if you went to Iowa, if you went to a, you can do something with that. Now, yeah, yeah. I do want to change your perspective just a little bit. T. will 
man for hire because I do get where you're going. With the right? The one time payment, fifty thousand, doesn't seem like much. But did you know that the average American doesn't have two hundred U.S. dollars liquid? Liquid. If a two hundred dollar emergency came up, I think four hundred. They changed it to four hundred. Yeah. I'm sorry, four hundred. I'm sorry if I misquoted. So half is a. But really, your average American don't have two hundred dollars. Really, like really? 50 and they're saying liquid. liquid. Yeah, but emergency come up. You, you don't have them. Yeah, yeah. Well, your even if the, we see all the time, how many of you guys go down your social media timeline and see a GoFundMe for a funeral? That's ain't ready. Right ain't ready. now, a cremation is a thousand dollars or less. Most people who are responsible do have prepaid planning services, right? So that's a whole story right there. But when we talk about liquid, do they even have the $200 liquid? There's an emergency. Do you have, some people say, yes, we have it. But you can tell the people who have it, you can just glance at the way they live and say, I expect you to have it. And then you can look at the average American. When you look at homelessness, when you look at the crushing school debt that black women have occurred, my, I have someone very close to me. She's a chiropractor. She has a very successful practice. Mm -hmm. She owes over a million dollars in school loans, right? Craziness. Thank you, but no. Um, <laughs> You'd rather not be a doctor. <laughs> right, thank you. She's, but, but she's got a great successful practice, so she doesn't feel the crushing debt from it. However, how much more successful would your practice be if you did, you know, if it got forgiven or something spectacular happened and they took it off your, um, she's a doctor. Um, but you guys understand what I'm saying. When you don't even have 200, 400, forget the 400, do you have liquid $1,000? If, some, if something was to go down today, do you have a thousand dollars liquid that you can just reach out and grab and take care of whatever you need to take care of? And these are the concerning questions that many people, they can't answer it. They're too embarrassed to answer. And this is why we say Bitcoin has many uses. If you could use Bitcoin as a savings account, if you had a thousand dollars and it goes up, boom, 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 next thing you know, you got 1600 in there, right? <laughs> Instead of just having a thousand dollars, now yeah. you got you got extra money. You could use it as a saving account. Right. You know, some people will sell their Bitcoin. Some people are diamond hands and say they will never sell. I we get won't, it. It depends on, you know, your situation. situation. So, um, but nobody's tripping on that because you take profits. If you made profits and you need to use the money, then use the money. And T. Will Lime in for hire, you're right. We just did a show where we talked about a 100000 in salary isn't oh, what it goodness. is in these different places. And this is why we talk to you guys about flag theory. So T. Will Lime in for hire. I don't know how long you've been watching our show, but I'm talking to you, cousin, right now, right? And every, all the other cousins, y'all just sit and listen. But T. Will and I, we're going to have a little cipher real quick, right? We are a family of six. One thing I say about my husband that I absolutely adored about him is he never, like, restricted my ability to have children. When we met, I think he thought I was joking, but I did tell him, like, I want to have, like, 10 kids. I think he thought I was joking, but... He never stopped me from having a whole bunch of children, even when he felt stressed about it, <laughs> right? We, I wanted a big family. He loves his big family. But um, I had always wanted to be a nation builder. That was very important to me. Now, as we were coming along, he's like, yo, I have a dream. I have a vision. And we have all of these children we're responsible for, but it's going to it's going to require us to shift, meaning we can't do this in Florida. Aaron, we are in a position where we're beginning to walk into the revenue that we command experience-wise, age-wise, whatever else-wise, right? Yeah, I was out the game. And he's like, and in order to really maximize and optimize this, we got to shift gears a little bit. We can't do it here in Florida. Okay, yeah, cool, Florida, babe. Florida is, I mean, I'm not going to bang on Florida because I know some of you people might live there, but we just wanted to go to a place that was quieter, more tranquil. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy Florida. stuff going on yeah, there. Yeah, but we're also talking about cost of living, right? Yeah. Because Florida has a huge population of, of boomers. 
capital. They are taking a significant amount of the wealth back. That's one. Your second large population are New Yorkers who typically make a significant amount of, of revenue and salary, right? If not salary, in, in retirement. Or in retirement. That's why I said the boomers, yeah. one, and the New Yorkers, two. New but Yorkers, they're the same thing. They're New York boomers. But there's also young New Yorkers. You well, can remember making, in Orlando. They ain't making no but money. But what I'm saying is New Yorkers are used to paying a lot of money for stuff. So when they up the price in that market, New Yorkers don't notice it. That's my point. Not like somebody from Pensacola going to come to Orlando and be like, yeah, is this a little pricey here? Anyway, T will line man for hire. In that vision, his idea is I want, we have all these kids, we got, we got mouths to feed too. They put flowers on me, right? Jay-Z wasn't lying about that. Cold we <laughs> kiss my cold cheeks, right? They, um, they are going to require us to do something different than our grandparents did, than our parents did. We want to give them that leg up. We want to start that generational legacy planning for them. I want to aggressively, here's the aggression, the ambition in my husband, invest 80% 80, 80 of whatever we're bringing in and live off of 20 and not be uncomfortable. Well, I had always lived in the United States. We did Costa Rica, but that's just another story for another day. And it sounded impossible. It sounded utterly impossible. And um, that's your favorite. <laughs> so, you know, it took that, that, that courage, that courageousness. It took that vision. It took that execution. Like, we're going to try it. If that's what you want to do, we as a family, we're going to ride together and we're going to do it. And believe it or not, we were able to pull it off. We had no idea. We didn't start in this big, beautiful house. We surely didn't. Let me make that clear. We had to sell all of our belongings. I just want y'all to have a perspective on oh, what that was. I'm going, going into all of that. No, no, because I got to get through these. OK, yeah. OK, OK. But yeah, real you... quick, because we, we ciphering, right? We having a cipher. Yeah, we had to sell all of our belongings. You are changing the, your culture dynamic. You are separating everybody from their friends, their family, or whatever, and we're not sad to say goodbye to them because in 20, you know, at the time, 2017, 2016, we still had Messenger and stuff. You can do the FaceTime. Everybody got an iPhone, iPad, iMac. No big deal. But the discipline, the commitment, and the choices and trade-offs we made in order to get that plan, and we're better off for it all these years later. All yeah. of our children have at least two investments in Bitcoin. Yeah, so, and also, I mean, you know, we're talking mostly about Bitcoin today, but. But I'm just saying, taking the money that you have and making it what it is we, somewhere we all, else if we can't do it we in all, the US. We, we always like to talk about silver. Just buy one ounce a week, buy about $23, $23 mm -hmm. 24 maybe. Um, buy one ounce a week, you know, something you would have. You would have went out and, and ate at a meal, you know, happy hour or something mm -hmm. like that at the Cheesecake Factory, mm -hmm. maybe. And so buy one ounce a week. Yeah. But ounces, hold on a second, because T. Ounces, will, he said ounces. he's broke. Oh, cousin, I wasn't making it about you. I was just talking to you because I, I thought the point you brought up was excellent. I'm broke, baby. When you get a chance, right, I'm your cousin. We're your family. Your cousins are here to help. Just reach out, email us so we can have a FaceTime conversation and maybe help get you in order to where you don't have to say you're broke anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. If we just take a look at a few things, we might be able to reset, reshift yeah. your mindset, reshift some of your behavior. And you might see that you can start to kind of catch your breath and get yeah, to where we're not financial advisors. This is not financial oh. advice. We're not going to charge you anything. We're not selling anything. But we are your family. Reach out to us so that we can try to help you if that is something that you feel like you will benefit from. Yeah, and like friend of the show, Andy Shackman say, gold and silver, that is wealth. So if you just order one ounce of silver, you got wealth right there. Mm -hmm. And you do it next week and the week after, and you know, chopping wood, chopping wood, chopping wood. And over time, you'll say, oh man, I got a nice little coffer of silver. And that, that'll be your wealth. You won't be broke. Nope. You won't be broke. Won't Just be keep broke. chopping wood. Chop wood with it. And one of Simon's favorite things about silver, especially physical silver, it's so tedious to have to box up and mail out in order to, they got to appraise it. 
then tell you how much they can give you for it. Then you have to agree if you want to take that. It's such a process that you're not going to squander your silver for something that isn't uber important. But T will reach out to us, right? We are cousins. I don't even like the idea that you're broke. We can help get you an order. We're not going to charge you a dime. We're not selling you anything. But um, just let me know when we can talk. Mo said basically what they're saying is stop buying Jordans and teeth, like veneers or gold teeth, and then go catch the bus. No, Mo, we're not saying that. Right. We're saying like that cash, right? you have choices and trade-offs in life in order to get the outcome that you want. Yes, indeed. And you have to be serious about those choices and trade-offs to get the serious outcome. So. For any of you watching this, y'all are all family. Reach out to me, assets.arbitrage at gmail.com. Simon and I will get on FaceTime so you can see the iris of my eye and know that the things that we're telling you is, is real. Right? We, we got married. I met him when I was 19, y'all. We got married. I was 21 years old when we got married. We know what it is to be broke. We know what it is to kind of struggle a little bit to get your family together. It's just that, thank goodness, the chemistry between us is so strong and, and, and beautiful that I was able to trust him from the beginning when he comes up with these crazy ass ideas like Bitcoin. Y'all should have met Aaron in 2013 when he was trying to explain to her what Bitcoin was <laughs> and why a whole bunch of our money is going into it. You should have met, you should have met her in 2000, fresh out of New York, fresh out of Queens. Queens in the house. But um, so we know what it is to be broke. We know what it is to try to pull something together now. We are, I can't say that because we did, we, we came from comfortable lifestyles, yeah. right? I didn't grow up in Left Rack City. I grew up on Long Island. Where My mother from? and father did well. Where? I was born in Left Rack. Left Rack City? That's where Nori was But born. we didn't grow up in Left Rack. I grew up on Long Island. I was three years old. I told you guys this story. We moved to Long Island. So I did grow up comfortably. But my father, being a boomer generation, didn't have that vision moving forward. Now, he did leave us something significant that Simon took, flipped. Bitcoin was 8,000 when dad passed away. 7,600. And he put all of it into it. But not for us to go flossing and out here flexing on every Tom, Dick, and Harry. It's for our grandchildren who don't exist yet. None of my children have children yet. Although I am trying to get Sean to hurry the hell up. <laughs> no, bring her down here. No, bring her down here and shame them in front of 50 people. <laughs> but we know what it's like to be, but we know what it's like to struggle. We know what it's like to need diapers and baby clothes um, and, you know, school uniforms and yeah. your living paycheck to paycheck. We know what that's like. So I don't want you guys to see us here in this big, beautiful house in hey, hey, hey. Mexico and think like what they got, what they need. They don't know. We know what it's like. We yeah. do know what it's like. Yes, indeed. Let me get on. Um, Hi, Michelle. Hey, hey, what's up? What's Thank up? Thank you so much for joining us, sweetheart. So let me get on to this point too. Uh, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a tough one. All right. So <clears throat> we are all narcissistic to some degree, and we should judge character by actions and not by appearances. So we are all narcissistic to some degree. Everybody, right? to some degree, and we should be judging by actions and yeah. not appearances. And not appearances, especially in this space. So I'm good, especially in this space. In this space. <laughs> especially in this space. But we often talk about how the appearance, how you're programmed in the United States especially, right? Because the program in the United States is not seen in anywhere else in the world, honestly. Maybe in the UK. Yeah, I'm, well, Western world. Canada, UK, yeah, uh, I believe. But not uh, even uh, in Mexico. Uh, Maine, uh, Australia, and stuff like that. But <laughs> Mo said y'all did very well. But Mo, you don't know about the choices and trade-offs. That's that's the point that I'm making. Mm -hmm. Um, the conveniences that people take for granted every day, we don't even have access to. Yeah, we live out in the middle of nowhere, but it's nice. It's, it's like you just look out and you see the land and. See the uh, animals, land like animals, that. horse yeah. poop, cow poop. Um, but two, you know, when my husband and I get on page together, sometimes it requires it requires a discipline that a lot of women would be like, mm -mm, "Nope, you figure something else out." 
make it happen a different way, but I'm not gonna give this up. Uh -oh. I'm willing to give up a lot of things in order for my grandchildren to have access to a significant amount of Bitcoin in a world where access is going to be very difficult. So, you know, for us did very well, the work that's involved, you guys hear our conversations. We don't tell y'all nothing we don't actually do as a practice. I do 12 week quarters every single quarters, right? Thank you, baby. Hubby and I, we have a coffee date every morning because it's hard for us to be alone. As you can see, that is our third Siamese twin. And during our coffee dates, we have a business meeting. Right? What are we looking at this quarter? What do we need to set up? What do we need to take care of? Da, 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 da. Our pillow talk is, this is what we need for the podcast. This is what we need for this. This is what we need for that. And we move in a way that a lot of people are like, that's just too much. Yeah. We have a lot of goals. We have a lot of objectives. We have a lot of things that we want for our grandchildren. Again, people who don't exist. And the choices and trade-offs that come with it require us to practice on a daily basis delayed gratification. You guys see me on here. I look nice. I get the jewelry I like. He gets the shoes he likes, the hats no, he likes. Yeah. Where's Big Watch dude? He's got every Invicta you can think of. I'm still trying to get some new LeBron job to help me out. But little can. things, <laughs> no, right? I do my own hair because I know that hair is about 1000 to $1,500 every two weeks. I do my own nails because in the United States, that's $100 to $150 every two weeks. Um, little trade-offs. Um, the only precious metal, the only real metal I buy is precious metals. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of money in gold earrings, gold necklace, gold bracelets, and stuff like that. When I need to energize, I hit the stash, handle it, play with the children with it. There's a lot of different things that moves and stuff that we make that other people wouldn't be willing to. I cook a Thanksgiving size meal five to six times a week. We're a family of six. We don't eat out that often. Yeah, but that saves money. So and um I'm, I'm, Bitcoin Shango. Oh he said time piece. Don't call it a watch. Yeah don't so be um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to dig into this. Uh so we are all but you didn't do the narcissistic piece. That's why I'm digging okay. into the narcissistic so we are all narcissistic to some degree and we and need to judge by appearance i'm sorry we need to judge by actions and not appearance. character by actions by my appearances and so um i think in, in this he's talking about social media i probably i mean i would this is what i glean from yeah. it um people want to be seen you know you feel good you put a picture out there boom i ain't talking about no only fans picture i'm just saying you put a picture out there of yourself you have only fans no i'm saying i'm trying to net really pictures you just take a selfie and you like if you get some likes, like boom, boom, it makes you feel better. I would sign up for your OnlyFans. I'm not. I'll be, your, I'll be your OnlyFans. And so I would sign people up. feel better. And so there's a bit of narcissism in that. And then you. But put the people faking in. the pictures, y'all see when the two. No, the girls, real pictures. I'm talking about real pictures, real pictures, real, real, pictures, real people. Oh. You know, you can picture, post a, you know, you had a barbecue this weekend. Or oh, yeah, 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 the real stuff. The real stuff. But you know, the Twitter girls, they use their fingers to look like legs, like they sitting on the beach, and it's really like a background. Like, people. I ain't talking about that. They do the most with the appearance. No, 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 I'm talking about normal people. Normal now. people. Normal people. Okay. You feel good. We're when going you to church. Like somebody come in the comments and say, oh, you look beautiful, girl. Or, beautiful you know, family. Like, something like that. It makes Gorgeous you feel couple. good. Gorgeous couple. So mm -hmm. that's, that, that, that builds up a little bit of narcissism in you. Yes, We're not talking about the narcissist narcissistic people um, to the fullest to the fullest and like gotcha. what they call the dark triad and we might talk <laughs> about that one day okay. um, the dark triad and uh but not that narcissistic but uh we're not talking about ted bundy level but we are talking about people who you know just hey it's nice to see i took a picture with me and my baby it's my little baby you know you like to see i got oh, 50 likes feel good feel good mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. so um it, it, it gets into that but um but People, like she said, we got to do it on, a, um, not on appearances, but on actions. Like, yeah. What are the actions of the people? So, But uh, even big corners, right? Because like I said, the MLMers love to hop in, to, they love sliding on my DM yeah. and talk to me about Bitcoin and their actions, the demonstration of their speech, the things that they say. Yeah. Let me know that you have no idea what Bitcoin really is, do you? What are you selling? And I don't mind. I call them Johnny come lately. Yes. 
I don't mind people who are new to Bitcoin and trying to learn, learn, but I don't like the people who just pop in on Bitcoin and act like they've been here since the game started. You know, and like they OGs in it and they just got here. Those are the people who get on our nerves, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, yeah, so, yeah, you got to deal with them. Or man. the people who spread the misinformation, yeah. your FTXers, right, who make the <laughs> space look bad. Rough right. Years. No one could have known that FTX would have collapsed the way it collapsed, except the people inside. I can't remember the, the little geeky girl name, but um, it was only the people inside. You're seeing commercials. Whole stadiums are being sponsored by FTX. Yeah. Take it back. Um, when they do their pot, when they were doing their podcasts and their uh, their advertisements, right, to learn more investors and stuff, no one could have known that it would have imploded the way it imploded. And this is what we're talking about, the demonstration or the, the actions versus the appearance of it. Now, I'm sure that there were a lot of red flags along the way if you would have gotten involved. Typically, whenever I see that they a company is reaching out to celebrities, that's red flag number one. Because real Bitcoiners are really not feeling a celebrity coming in talking about, yeah, buy this, and you know that they don't have no idea what it is. Or that they don't talk about it at all after that. You don't hear it anywhere in their speech. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Exactly. Right? So those are typically red flags to me. Um, again, you want to get to the point where your sats are stacked, your precious, whatever your wealth is, is stacked so well that you can be extremely selective in what you are choosing to invest in, what you are choosing to put your money in, what you're willing to put your reputation in, mm -hmm. right? If you're backing, if you're sponsoring somebody, if you're supporting a content cousin who has something, you really want to vet it and look into it so that you don't get your reputation dragged into their rug pull, to yeah, their- so, um, so that's why I say as a Bitcoiner, no rug pull. No rug pool, no counterparty risk, right? Right. No counterparty risk. We ain't have to deal with that. Um, read some of these. I got to get into number three. We so be Bitcoin here. Shango yeah. is in the house under his Clark Kent alias. He said he tried for years to get away from his own narcissistic tendencies. Uh. It was because he was young <laughs> in mind and body and thought the world revolved around him. After he became a father, he wanted to focus on the children. Yep. He says, I don't want to be a social vampire. That's what the MSM calls it now. He uh, says, Simon, make sure you sign over that third paycheck to your wife by midnight tonight. Thank you, Bitcoin Shango. <laughs> he says, smash them likes. Y'all don't, don't worry that. if that ain't read in there. <laughs> um, Mo said, I haven't had an Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook for over 10 years. Um, Bitcoin Shango said, those dang FUD flingers. <laughs> I like that. Mike, I can't say it. Novogratz or whoever the Luna Tattoo guy needs to hush up about any and all things Bitcoin. Oh, yeah, that guy, Novogratz. I do want to tell y'all, though, for those of you who are on Twitter, you definitely want to follow Bitcoin Shango. Bitcoin Shango and Bitcoin Chris have really great tweets, and a lot of times they help kind of keep us on the current events of the day. Yeah. So yeah, I, I am going to ask man. the cousins to, I follow Bitcoin Shang. I read all of your tweets. Yeah, I, I got to check y'all out. I try to heart as many of them as possible. That's why I see what, what you can say. That's but I'm yeah, Shango it. and Bitcoin Chris, like if you're trying to keep on top of something, obviously Zay, you definitely want to follow them on Twitter. Yeah, man. And because and, 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 we always, especially uh, Bitcoin Chris, because we did a show with Bitcoin Chris and uh, Bitcoin Shango. You guys can yeah, cam up, man, stuff. whenever you want. We'll, just, we'll send you the link, man. Just yeah. cam up. Shango, just, I would love we just do a random. We just, just, we just do a random show and just chop up some yeah. good game. So let us know if you if you, if you you are interested in that. The other thing is, y'all hear me begging y'all to follow us on Twitter. Y'all think I can do these Instagram whole pictures oh, and get a whole man. bunch we're of followers? Again. But, I, I it's not worth it. it. That's not the outcome that we're looking for. No, that's, not, so, that's, not that's why we only have 150 followers. <laughs> so let me get on three. So let's let's go to three. Number three. Number three on the laws of human nature. We should strive to be superior character and use covetous behavior to our advantage. So that's that, that's a lot of words. That's a lot of fancy words, right? So basically, how can we chop it up and make it? Let's make it simple. Uh, we should survive. We should strive to be superior character. And we should covet our behavior 
to our advantage. With behavior, it also means uh, access, or access to our advantage, right? You need to act like everybody can't have access to you. No. Right? You know, these are people, like you're trying to talk to people about certain things, and I'm just talking about in the investment space, but we could, we could flesh it out, talk about just real life. Everybody shouldn't have access to you, right? You gotta work, you gotta do stuff, you build something, people don't really believe in it. So, hey, don't be, don't be ringing my phone up, don't text me, don't do that. Y'all all can't have access to me right. in that regard. And, you know, not saying isolate yourself, but have a level of isolation where people can't just reach you. Don't just come, you can't just come knock on my door. Mm -hmm. Right. Nobody can just come knock on my door and say, hey, what you doing? Or, you know, come. people can't just, you know, so speak on that because you because you're out here more in the um, in the corporate world where you have to speak to people and people can't just have access to you. Well, saying, one, you have to set boundaries. Yeah. Um, I know you guys are familiar with the term billable hours, <laughs> but the concept actually comes from gatekeeping who is worth your time and who isn't. Mm. So I'm gonna say that again. The concept of billable hours is designed to be a gatekeeper on who is worth your time and who isn't. If they're willing to pay, that means they're willing to pay attention. They're not gonna waste your time. They're not gonna waste your mentoring. They're not gonna waste your knowledge. They're not gonna waste your advice. That's why you notice that professionals often bill billable hours. Attorneys, accountants, um, what are other some doctors, other you know people within the space who often give out advice, expertise, etc. If you, and Shango, it sounds like you've been doing this for a while. Let freedom ring, I know you've been doing this for a while. Black Rue, you've been doing this. If you've been talking to people, if you've been orange pilling people till you were blue in the face or orange in the face, and they're not listening to you, when that number goes up, they can't reach you after that. Now, if you have a heart of gold, maybe you, oh, now that Bitcoin's 150,000, you wanna have the conversation? Well, do you remember when I was talking to you about it at 16,000? Do you remember those conversations? Right, you don't want people to waste your time, period. Not even a minute of it, not 60 seconds. Time, since we're investors in this space, time is our most precious commodity. It is more precious than 10,000 Bitcoins. It's more precious than 20, than 210 million Bitcoin, and there's only 21 million. So that's your time is, I'm just saying, if Bitcoin double this, it's your time, your 60 seconds is more precious than that, right? So, you don't want to write that check for every Tom, Dick, and Harry. If you wouldn't just hand out money, you don't want to just hand out your time either. Right? Consider your time like a check. Who are you giving it to? Does that person deserve to deposit your time? A lot of times they don't. Two, when you guys are on social media, um, I don't know what y'all get down is, but don't let every little conversation slash narrative slash scenario slash discussion trigger or elicit a response of anger from you. All right, take it with a grain of salt. You don't want that, that energy, that chakra, that red chakra to light up because you saw something, read something, heard something on social media. That may not be worth your time and it certainly may not be worth your time. Right, because they're doing it for that purpose, on purpose. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the things that we want to kind of take into context. Simon and I, we often tell you guys, if, if you need anything where your cousins were here for you, I don't give that invitation to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. I know y'all are serious. I know you guys are trying to make changes. I know you guys are wanting better for your families. We will take all the time in the world for you. But the average Joe coming up, if they're just like, well, well, what is Bitcoin then? Yeah. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna have a conversation with you. Yeah. If you come to me in all sincerity and say, hey, Aaron, I know you and Simon have a podcast. I'm noticing that Bitcoin is trending in social media. And I was just wondering if you could just take the time to really explain it to me so I can figure out what it is. Simon and I are gonna take the time to sit down and chit chat with you. But most of the time it's typically the former, which is, yeah. then what is it? 
But if, if it's so great, then how come? And then you get all of the FUD uncertainty. Yeah, I'm not going to do the FUD with you. Uh, but the person who actually wants to sit down, I'm still going to throw some books at you. And you're going to have to go read. You know, you, you got to put read. the time. You can't make the you time read, up. You know, Bitcoin, Black America. We all know, had to do it. it. Yeah, we, you know, we, we read these books. Go to Bitcoin standard. I got a few other books that I can toss with people like that. Read, you got to learn. You and a lot of learn. times, if you don't pay with money, you're going to pay with your time. Yeah, you got to learn. You got to read. I know people don't like to read anymore. Hell, these are audio books. You get these audio books and just listen to them while you're doing whatever you're doing. Cooking, working out, whatever, just sitting on the couch. And you can replay a podcast. You can rewind it. <laughs> you know, you can scrub through it. A lot of people's podcasts have the great um, time markers. Yeah, they do. So if there's certain points that you needed to kind of reiterate or get reiterated for you, you can do that. Um, I want to shout out BK Crypto. Boom. Guess who stepped in the room to cap? Coming from the shower now. Um, Nerd Up Inc. Thank you so much for joining us. Cousin Jake is on. He oh, said man. they can't read, bro. Oh, you still got his voice back, so you can't text him no more, I Cousin Jake. It's still, it's still shaking, he said they're going to be playing dodgeball with them books you throw. <laughs> they're yes, be that's what I say. People don't read, man. And, and unfortunately, you know, reading is. It was fundamental. That's what they told Reading us. Now, now it's just it's a rap, but these you got to read these books. Um, it, man, I got uh, free books, that, you know, free PDFs that you can read. Mm -hmm. They're not long. They're not hard. Well, that one was. I mean, but if you, you it's a hundred pages and tough. If read. you then you do it like you did in elementary school. You underline the term you don't yeah, understand. A, you look it up. That was a tough read. Um, Bitcoin Shango has found the nearest telephone booth. He is now in his Superman form here, here in the go. chat. T will man for T will line man for hire. He said, laugh out loud. I bought that book years ago, the gold edition. Never seen it. First time ever mentioning it. <laughs> what the hell no? I'm, I think he's talking about um, the, the standard, the Bitcoin standard by Safety and the Moose. Are you talking about Safety and the Moose's book? Um, T will line man for hire? What was wrong? Uh, Let Freedom like Ring that. said, most don't want to educate themselves. We talked about that. You know that people are resistant to educating themselves because your body physically, that, that electrical synapse is physically creating a groove in your brain. It feels like work. And that's why most people are resistant to learning new things. That's why they're resistant to change because change requires you to learn something new. And because you have a physical, it is a physical transformation of your brain that takes place. That's why they're so resistant to it. Yeah, damn, I, I need that. Um, T. Will, my man for hire, said, y'all don't remember the gold edition? I'm a thousand percent sure Safe Dina Moose had a gold edition. I don't know about the gold edition. I, I, he said time flies. Time flies when you're having fun. Time flies when you're not. This is my battery. The battery. I need him to go get the okay. battery back in. So we're going to go into number four of these uh, laws of human nature, if you will. Everyone is prone to being short-sighted and defensive. So what does that mean? Say it one more time. Everyone is prone to being short-sighted and defensive. But the people who are especially short-sighted are okay. defensive. Is really right. what that should say. Right. So uh, so that you know that, that that talks about people in general, and we're just trying to uh, zoom in to like investors, bitcoiners, uh, altcoiners, if you will. If that's what we call it. Uh, so you're short-sighted and defensive. So you are a altcoiner, <laughs> and you want to buy certain altcoins, and when things don't go right for you then you become defensive of the Bitcoin maxis who said, hey man, just just get on the train. I know everybody want a hundred bagger from something that could go from point zero 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 one to one cent and it's like to a dollar seventy five. But but when <laughs> but when as we say in Spanish, donde? Donde? That's where. When is cuando? Cuando. See, cuando. There we go. Cuando. Wonder, when is it going to go there? Why don't you just get on and, and just make the money? <laughs> it's going to go there nunca. Why don't you just make the money and, and, and get on with Bitcoin? People are short-sighted. Short-sighted leads to higher time preference. They want something right now. Which leads to defensiveness. Because people like us in the Bitcoin community, we've been here so long, and they feel like, oh, man, y'all made all this money or whatever, whatever they think. This thing can happen fast. And then you hear some people looking for it, like, I'm looking for the next Bitcoin. 
Yes, like, I hear a lot of that. Like, and on. they want to go all in on this is going to be the next Bitcoin. And I don't think there's going to be another like we thought at first. I'm not, I'm not, I, I thought Ethereum. No. I thought Ethereum was going to be like, okay, no, this was like, this might hit. Well, no, it, it, I'm not saying that Ethereum won't go up, but it's different than Bitcoin. I mean, I know so, when I said, right, so I, I thought it was going to be the next Bitcoin. Like I thought Ethereum, if Bitcoin's at 70,000, I thought Ethereum would be at like, you know, 60,000 or something like no, that. No, I no, thought no, it was no, going to no. be the next big thing when no. it came out. And then the gas fees hit and that was like, no, gas fees hit, hit, hit a long time ago. That's they just refunded the gas fees. Did you see that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm Musk gonna... got gas fees refunded. Um, BK Crypto. He said, but change is always happening. I don't know who said it, but I remember, I think I first heard it from my husband. He said, the only constant is change. Yeah, so people fight against change. They want things to stay the same, stay the same, but the only constant that you find is change. Things will always change, no matter what. And so, uh, things will always change. Um, he said, man, people run, I mean, literally run from books. I try to recommend easy books and they get turned off. Um, Critwork said it would be cool to meet everyone on a live. It would be. We're trying to get y'all to come on this live and have like a family reunion. Yeah. Um, we all have the same stories of trying to convince friends and family to no avail. This is BK Crypto. <laughs> he said, No hablo español. <laughs> um, no, no hablo español. Yo hablo español. También. Mucho. También. Um, BK Who's Crypto talking? said they don't respect the grind. Nah, they don't. Jay said, no, ain't no second best. I realize that now. Um, there's only one Bitcoin. But I did think when Ethereum first came out, I was yeah, like, no, oh, that's what I do it. No, no, I was telling them that. But because it's different. It, they're different. And so, but still, counterparty risk. Meant the counterparty risk because of him. I meant the performance-wise, though. I did think when it's it first came out. If something happened to him, man, Ethereum's done. Exactly. You remember what happened when Steve Jobs died? Apple, Apple went down. Now it fought back. It fought back. But the counterparty risk is Steve Jobs was the genius behind Apple. Mm -hmm. And when he died, it's like, uh oh, what are we going to do now? And so, I mean, they got that. What's his name? Tim Cook? Tim like, Cook, yeah. Nah, I don't know if he's a genius. I don't know about it. Crip works at if you're dating a person yeah. and you're trying to teach them about Bitcoin and crypto. Uh oh, Crip work. Would she be wrong to kick them to the curb because we can't spend what I invested in? Am I wrong? Don't let nobody spend up your Bitcoin, girl. I'm not saying kick him to the curb, but if he doesn't have you a... kick them to the curb? She's kick asking. To the curb? She said, if you're dating a person okay. and you're trying to teach them about Bitcoin and crypto, would she be wrong to kick them to the curb because we can't spend what I invested in. Am I wrong? She's basically saying, am I wrong for not, am I wrong for not sharing profits with you who's not investing with me? And you really don't have a value for Bitcoin even though I'm trying to teach you. No, no. How yeah, you yeah. can get your own. <laughs> no, if you're dating somebody, don't give them none of your profits for Bitcoin. You know, it takes a while. You got to, yeah, don't, don't share with them, not yet. Share information. Don't share profits. Oh, cousin, <laughs> practicas con me. Or okay. I should say con you. Okay. He's saying he wants to practice with me. Okay. <laughs> Bitcoin Shango said, damn right. <laughs> yeah, <I ain't. laughs> he wanted to kick his ass to the curb. Yeah, we went to school in Queens to teach some kids about Bitcoin. It was uh -oh. amazing. The kids get it, much like he was. Yeah, the kids get it. But I think the kids' collective consciousness is born in the technological mm -hmm. era, right? Mm -hmm. Tino knows how to use the phone to get the stuff he wants to get on YouTube. I remember Junior was 13. Simon had an iPad. He's 13 now. Yeah, I, know, I, said, I said, Junior's 13. Oh. You had an iPad. When he was two years old, he used to play Roblox, and he used to ask us for Robux at two, three years old. So the kids are born with the collective consciousness of technological advancements. I think they're going to get it because I think it has been deposited in their collective consciousness. Yeah, and we talk to them about it. We, I'm talking about kids in general. Yeah, yeah. This generation of children in they general. Receive, they receive it. Jay Fever said Apple Lane did beep since Steve Jobs remade the same stuff that he created, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I was, I was in Apple when he died. And I was like, oh, man. Let Freedom Ring says Simon is absolutely right. Share the info, but not the profits. Yeah, yeah. You can share the info. That person's cool. 
Um, yeah, yeah. Let me get this number five off. If you, if you think you wanted to, um, what does that say? Thanks, guys. Oh, okay. Because everybody told, give me to the girl. Don't give you me to the girl. Give him one chance. more chance. Yeah. Give him, give him one more chance. Give. Give him, give him one more chance. Yeah. Give him one more chance. Mm -hmm. Like baby, give him one more chance. I feel you. Man. All right. So number five. We're gonna number five. It's simple. Uh, <clears throat> prevent self sabotage by employing a positive attitude and avoiding repression. Now I'm going to tell you this: in avoiding in avoiding self sabotage, a lot of your self sabotage is actually negative self talk, right? Phrases like "I am broke." You're yeah, you are not broke. broke. You're just in a state of brokenness right now. It's very different. It's very temporary things like being sick. Um, hopefully, you're not in a permanent state of sickness. It's a very temporary thing. So our self-talk, we want to kind of change those things. And that's yeah. why we often do a lot of mindset shifts with you guys, um, how to think, how to think about things. Because when you think about something different, your self-talk becomes different. Mm -hmm. um, instead of saying, I can't afford it, I tell you very often, you know, well, how can we afford that? Like, let's start thinking up of things that we need to, how can we get from A to B? Yeah. Even if the journey is all the way to the letter Z, we'll kind of, okay, well, how do we get to B? And then now how do we get to C? And now how do we get to D? And yeah. so on and so forth. So a lot of self-sabotage is rooted in negative self-talk. It's rooted in almost negative perception. That's why I said, um, oh, Bitcoin Shango's on here. Bitcoin Shango, I think it was you or Bitcoin Chris who had posted a gentleman's quote that said, um, you're not buying, for Bitcoin, you're not buying at the top, you're basically buying a future dip. Yeah, yeah. Like that's a good way to see it. Don't see it as buying it at the top. See it as buying as a future dip. Might have been Bitcoin Chris. I thought it was Bitcoin Shango. But if you remember who the original tweeter was, I would like to give him some credit. Um, and I wrote that down in my book, but I didn't write his name down. I don't know why. And I've been yeah. saying it to myself, like, don't even look at it because Bitcoin has no top. So you're not buying at the top. You're buying a future dip. It's a great way to change your, pers change your perspective. And in changing your perspective, you change your behavior. You change how you move. Maybe it was Chris. I only share my Bitcoin with the mother of my children. Any companion that elevates himself above friend status will get advice and info, not a single set. It was Chris. He said that was Chris. Okay. Um, but it was a great, 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 great tweet. And um, we were going to buy the Bitcoin anyway. But it's a great tweet for us to share with people who do have that apprehension and continuing to dollar cost average as Bitcoin continues to rise. Um, if you know, you know, thank you so much for joining us at Jake Fever. I agree with you, but do they have to innovate if people keep buying and they are sitting on the Mount Everest of cash reserves? I think it's on my Apple. Oh, yeah, they are. Sitting. Like, they don't have to Oh, they are sitting on the Mount Everest of cash reserves. Right? Oh, yeah, the cash. thing is, too, anything they slap that Apple on, that sticker on, people will stand in line to buy. Yes, they will. So... All right, so I'm going to go over number six. Some of these we can get through real quick. Number six uh, of the laws of human nature. Everyone is prone to the feelings of grandeur, uh, which <laughs> should be brought down to reality. What does that mean? What does that even mean? So people are, 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 are in grandeur. Delusions of grandeur? Delusions of grandeur, and they need to be brought down to reality. And so, how, how does that go? Man? Well, I know that a lot of people are in delusions of grandeur that as a country continues to struggle and get in trouble, that some governmental entity or some political candidate is going to come in like Christ himself and save them. That's a delusion of grandeur, right? You have to be the king of your own domain. You have to set yourself up so that you are in control of your own economic climate. Mm -hmm. um, another delusion of grandeur is that the dollar has been around forever and it'll always be around. That's a delusion of grandeur, right? Monetary policies change every 40 years. Your average person doesn't know that. And they are in the transition of a change right now when we start talking about CBDCs. So 
and governmental entities and world governmental entities trying to find ways to tighten the reins of control on the masses. Again, a lot of the issues that we're having with the average person is sheer ignorance. They simply do not know. They do not care to know. They don't want to take the time to know. They are going to be defensive because of their ignorance. And this is what sparks these delusions of grandeur. This is how it's always been, so this is how it's going to continue to be. And again, BK Crypto said the only constant is change. That's all it is. Um, if you know, you know, yes, they do. Inflation is the reason they can't put that much cash in the Bitcoin yet. So without innovation, they can't beat inflation. They're going to be running in place. That was Jake. Yeah, they were. Um, Cousin Shango said, yeah, sure. I used to be a Muppet baby using my imagination for most of life situations, thinking something will happen or someone will swoop in and give them a reckless amount of money. So, um, yeah, so with delusions of grandeur, those are some of the delusions of grandeur that we are seeing. I know that there's a weird, I don't know if it's a delusion of grandeur, but there's a weird niche of people who celebrate when Bitcoin's down, and I don't know why. It's like, like I kind of like I told you so, but they can't tell me. But I the told people you who so, do that, it's not even like. Hours. A deck of millionaire is like, nah, 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 nah. let's not like Peter Schiff is like, I told you so, I told you so. And maybe he does yeah. celebrate. I don't know if he does or he doesn't. Yeah, but the people like who I'm seeing celebrating are typical average broke people. So that's why I don't understand it. Basically, you're not doing any better than I am, nanny, nanny, poo poo. I don't know. I, I think it's more altcoiners. Oh, is it? I see. I don't know who it is. Like, I'll just see them in the space and they're gloating. Like, when Bitcoin went back down to that almost 60, they were like, yes! They were like, Where's your Bitcoin now? And like, all of these weird celebrations. It was weird. Yeah, they're all corners. It was weird. Like, y'all are weird as F. Nah, it's all on me. I have to think ahead of the greedy overlords. I have to presume the worst case scenarios, right? It's all on us to get us up and going. That's Bitcoin Shango. Oh, okay. Um, Saying yeah. like him, not an outside entity. No, nah, not most definitely, most definitely. It's just, um, you know, I, it's hard to even. He's um, cousin Ruth said people were celebrating when Solana was down, but why? <laughs> but why? I see, baby. All right, I'm gonna read number eight. I'm trying to get through these before my before the phone dies. Uh, so we tend to number eight. We tend to conform to group mentality and feel a false sense of entitlement. So how does that pop off? So group mentality, right? You know how group mentality works. Everybody knows how group mentality works. It's the egregor. Yeah, mob mentality, egregor. And uh, no, nah, he's not laughing. But, I know, but the noise will Yeah, the mob mentality above you. So, what does that say? Going either way, right? So, we have a mob mentality above us, the Which aggregor, is that, you know, they don't want Bitcoin to. They don't want Bitcoin to flourish and to thrive. Flourish, and, and they don't want people who are Bitcoiners to flourish and thrive. There's a mob mentality of those people. Um, you know, but then Bitcoin the has a mob mentality. Yeah, yeah, the coiners. Right. The Bitcoin, the maxis, the non-coiners have their mob mentality. What was the second string to that? Um, um, so they feel a sense of entitlement. They feel a sense of entitlement. You can't walk around. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Bitcoiner. I'm a whole coin. I, I don't really want to walk around with a T-shirt that says whole coiner, right? I see people do that. I said, well, you know, you want to lay low and stuff like that. I don't know how you feel about that. I celebrate however you wish. Yeah, I, well, you know, I, and you, I don't want people running down on me and all that. But like, if you <laughs> ran a marathon, people wear stuff all the time to let you know this is my fifth marathon. I run ten marathons, you know that kind of thing. Bitcoin is a marathon, and if you made it to a whole coin, you have multiple whole coins. I ain't mad at you for wearing a whole coin and shirt. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of time. No, nah, I'm laying low on that. Um, I get that you don't want to. Yeah, I'm gonna lay low. On right, I get that you don't want to be flexing on people, but I ain't mad at it. Um, the echo chamber, the group thing. Bitcoin Shango said he checks people when the Bitcoin maxis get too toxic. Yeah. Agreed. Some of them get crazy. Yeah. 
Um, if you know, you know, they better run in place with some Bitcoin. That is referenced in a comment where um, Jake said they're going to be running in place. Um, Cousin Ruth said, I remember when people were celebrating Bitcoin being down. Isn't it weird? I think it's people trying to prevent normies from getting into crypto. A sportscaster was making fun of Odell Beckham for wanting his salary in Bitcoin. It's but Odell it's, Beckham and somebody else. But, they, but he's up big. But he's up big now, right? It's um uh, Ru Ogun. Russell Ogun. Russell Ogun, Russell Ogun and um, they, but they're up big now. Yeah, right. now he, he now he looks like a smart guy. Right. You made fun of him because Bitcoin back then I think might have. But then you don't come out and say hand. something when it go up. Right, right now. Now he looks good. Um, cousin Shango said, I caution people to not advertise how much Bitcoin they have. Simon, yeah. he doesn't like that either. Yeah, All they're doing is paying the target on their back. Yeah, just lay low. Just lay low. Yeah. If you talk to people, you want to Bitcoin informa uh, information and education. But, you know, don't put it on your chest. Whole coiners just walking around flexing with your Thor arms if you, if you have them. Uh, some people have Thor arms. Some people do not. So I don't know. I don't know what the game is out there. Odell and them are a way big if they hold. I love his Thor arms. Y'all don't get me wrong. I rub on his arms at night and stuff, but he's a mess. Hey, right, where's well, the family show? We got four kids. They know how they got here. <laughs> um, but, you know, we really do want to have some perspective on how we think, have some perspective on how the non-coiners think, have some perspective on what, I don't remember who called them overlords. I think it was Shango. How the overlords think, right? Your political candidates and stuff like that so that you can move accordingly in life. I think anthropology, the study of human behavior is at. extremely important for you yeah. to add to your life portfolio. Um, you guys know that nonverbal communication is 85 to 90 percent of communication. Yeah. Just seeing when someone's talking to you, how their body is moving, how their eyes shift, their hand movements. And you can really tell when somebody is full of BS and when someone's actually sincere and authentic. Yeah, definitely. definitely. He said, now, now, behave, lovebirds. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> Shango, because I, I said I brought my yards that night. <laughs> I'm uh, waiting on those SFIO oh, Thor Arms merchandise. Okay. Cousin Rude, don't you start. Don't even start. But the baby knocked all of my books and stuff down to get to his toys. But look what it was in. It's all dusty. Y'all remember that? <laughs> I sat and read that. <laughs> Both Away by Michael Saylor. It's a, uh, but look how dusty it is, babe. It's a tough read. It's a good book. It's a tough read. Well, it's a little outdated now. Yeah. But you can see where he was coming from back then. Great book, though. Yeah, so number nine, let me get out of here because... Yeah, we're at the 122. Okay, category. number nine, all human... Excuse me. All human beings are aggressive by nature, but controlled aggression can be put to good for use. good use. So all human beings are aggressive by nature. The aggression can be put to good use. Good use aggression is ambition, like point blank, period. Right, your most ambitious people, and I'm not talking about the Carisha ambition, I'm not talking about that, right? No, Diddy, no, we're talking about good aggression, good ambition that will get you from point A to point B to point C to point D, etc. 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 So, you're saying you, you so you're going straight bridge line aggression to ambition, good aggression because he, he specified that controlled, aggression. right? Controlled aggression for good use yeah, is ambition. But you're not so ambitious, right? So we're talking about the polarity now, right? Your hermetic principle. We're not talking about the ambition of, I will do anything you tell me to do for $100. Okay. Right? Okay. I would be put in any precarious situation for some money. That's also ambition, but it's not for good use. You understand oh, what I'm okay. saying? Yeah, I was seeing it a different way, but that's okay. That's okay. So that's why I said not the Carisha level ambition, but ambition career-wise, ambition investment-wise, ambition nation-building-wise, um, that controlled aggression. You have to be aggressive. You have to be assertive. You have to be in control, right? You have to be able to respond and not react. That way you maintain the control in a situation. The control of your aggression. But you need the aggression in order to control the situation for good use, right? And that's that's the disclosure right there. Controlled aggression put is is put to good use. 
Yes. That's why I went and did the hermetic polar opposite yeah. for Carisha, right? Her ambition is I would do anything for anything. Let's see, I don't know. I don't know who that is, so it throws me off. Carisha is um Young Miami. I don't know who that is. See, see these guys, these people. Who they know, y'all know what I'm saying. See, they stay on top of this stuff. Right? I don't know really the stuff, but. But they were basically getting to the point where she kept telling people in the music she was willing to do anything for hundred dollars. Yeah, but what happens? Or for two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, and, and no. And that gets you in the trouble. But no disrespect to what you're talking about, um, but what happens is you're talking about controlled aggression uh, through men, and and that's what it really gets down to. Right, but like I said, even in men, controlled aggression put to good use. It's still ambition. It is, but it, it no has, matter how you shake it down, it's ambition. But it has to be done in a different way, correct? Put to good use, yes. But it's done in a different way. It's done in a above board way because it's being put to good use. That's the disclosure right there. He didn't just say controlled aggression. He said controlled aggression that is put to good use, and that is what ambition is. That is the. I have this goal that I want to achieve, and this is how I'm going to get there. This is how I'm going to execute. Okay. And this is how I'm going to continue to build and build and scale out and build and build. So, but as a black man, you're controlled aggression. Does that mean you're um, still ambition? Does it mean you're tap dancing? No. Well, to me, if you're tap dancing, you're not controlling your aggression. You're actually repressing it. So repression. So because you're capitulating at that point if you're tap dancing. You are tap dancing. You're capitulating. So that's not controlled aggression. That's repressed aggression, two very different things. Oh. And you're capitulating to the dominant culture. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Um, Cousin Shango said, I'm so chill, super chill, until those I love or my ability to provide for them are threatened. Then F around and find out. Um, he said, did she end up being on the yep she got listed as a sex worker on federal papers it's, it's right not a celebrity not an influencer not a high profile individual you got listed as a sex worker so that is cousin rude do a good thing on the hermetic principles um i'm gonna have him come back on soon yeah. cousin rude and do the hermetic principles with you guys i don't know if any of you guys read the Kabbalion. Wow. Which really, not to say that these principles are a little different, but I felt like he was trying to expand on the Kabbalion and make it his own. Oh yeah, but if you, yeah, because that's all you can. And make and that's all you can do, right? There's nothing new under the sun. Solomon told us that. But cousin Ruth do a great um, breakdown on the Kabbalion and the Hermetic principles, and I was just explaining the polar the polarity between the two, right? Con controlled aggression, ambition here. Ambition here, but is her aggression controlled? Is Diddy's aggression controlled here, right, in his ambition? And it's not. Yeah, it's but actually you, run amok, and that is what's getting yeah, him Yeah, but that's on high level, but, you know, when you just at work, if you have aggression that gets out of, out of control. You're going to be burning brown? Well, who can get mad? Can I get mad at work? Or Do you can remember you, that? Can you get mad at work? No, I cannot. I can't even. If you get mad at work, I can't even cool. be too... Um, concise because if i am too concise it comes off as cold unapproachable and I, i'm just i'm just stating a fact so like i have to smile when i talk you know and 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 but if i got mad they were like hey yeah, yeah, yeah. what well, do you remember about the ground yeah, um, Dave Chappelle allowed me to reintroduce myself. My name is Hope. Yeah, yeah, bitch. you can't be. <laughs> Ace of the OP. Y'all yeah. remember that Dave Chappelle when keeping it real go wrong? Yeah, you know, you can't. I can't remember what he asked them, though. Oh, yeah, you can't. Um, <laughs> it's just like Ace of the OP. And make it work for you. As you get older, you'll learn that. If you're younger, sometimes you let it go. Um, he said exactly because she was willing to do anything for, yeah, she tell you that in all her songs. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I could be wrong, but she was named in the case, like I said, as a sex worker, not as a high profile individual. She wasn't a redacted individual because a lot of the high profile people in that case, their names were redacted because of their high profile. She wasn't named as a celebrity. She wasn't named as an influencer. She wasn't named as a, um, a rapper or a musical, whatever, she was named as a sex worker. So do we feel sorry for her or something? Or what? No, we oh, were just, okay. they were just mentioning that. 
Um, Cousin Rue said at Bitcoin Shango, honestly, I can at least $20 LCX in the next two years, not financial advice. BK Crypto said, y'all are very eclectic. <laughs> <laughs> We're Aquarius, and that's the problem. BK Crypto. That's that's just the eclectic is the Aquarian that you're feeling. All of the stuff that we look into and think about and talk about and implement in our life. Your kids have a wide range. Our kids are... Sean's probably the most normal kid in the house. <laughs> um, Diddy and Clive Davis been wild out here. They've been wilding for years. And Quincy Jones been wilding. No, not Quincy. BK Crypto says so, New York. Yes, I have to watch that. Um, the New York in me, I have to be very careful at work. Is that my mother? No, I told you, she know when I'm live. She's like, I'm going to call and interrupt your live anyway. She's going to call back. Yeah, that's all right. Look, I'm, I'm going to try to shut it down so you guys. Um, yeah, we're, we're at the one well, hour let me, get, let me get number 10 in. Let me get okay. number 10 in if I can. So this is a, a good one. All right. We are all, number 10, this is number 10 of the laws of human nature. Uh, we are all influenced by generational values and can benefit from embracing the fact of death. Say it one more time. Oh boy, let's do it one more time. We are all influenced by generational values. We are all influenced by generational values. And can benefit from embracing the fact of death. And can benefit from embracing the fact of death. I had no idea what that meant the first time Simon read it to me. I said, what does that mean? Don't you want me to tell you? Go ahead and tell oh, me. Okay. It still kind of don't make sense to me, but I, I guess I get it. You can't appreciate tradition without laws. No, I mean, it, well, so this is the way I took it from, from when I read the book. So you will have generational values, whether they come from above you, you know, or you're starting your generational values um, at this level with your family. But the embracing of death is uh, so he was taking it. He was, he was getting more metaphysical with it right here. You have to embrace the fact of death, right? You could build all the Bitcoin up in the world. You could build it all silver up in the world. You're gonna die, so you have to embrace the death. But you have to build in the generational values within that. But you right? can't appreciate the generational values without the loss. Yes, without, without the death, you can't without. appreciate what your grandmother poured into you. And a lot of times people don't, right? While she's here, like I just said that about my mom, but I should have just answered, right? <laughs> One day I won't be, I won't have her interrupting my life. So mm -hmm. you can't appreciate those generational values without loss. Yes, and the values that were poured into you by the people who uh, may be the loss, right? right? And if we're gonna be the loss, mm -hmm. pouring into them, they have to appreciate. They won't be able to appreciate those values until then as but well. But you have to embrace that. Like, we would have to embrace that. Yeah. We all have to embrace I think it. the Western culture is one of the only cultures, and Cousin Rue would probably be able to um, to back me on this better than anybody. The, it's the Western generation, or the Western culture, that seems to be scared of death, yeah. right? Eastern, the Eastern Asians, they, um, they have, they're at peace with it. Um, Hispanics, you can see how they handle death yeah. um, to the point of, you know, they have the day of the dead, they have a, an acceptance of it. It's really us in the Western culture that, A, there's a fear of mortality. People don't like to talk about it. People don't want to plan it. It's like, if I, if I act on this energy any which way, shape, or form, I'm going to drop dead, like, right now. And it's yeah. like, I don't know where that comes from. Yeah. Um, that fear of mortality, that fear of discussion of mortality, that the idea that you're going to live and work forever, right? I don't know where that comes from. Hey, Cousin Rue, you out there, you already know. We talked about Brother Panic. You know what he, he said about that. You know what he said about that. He was ready. He was ready for it. And people have to be ready because it, it's, it's going to happen. And, you know, so you have to, I'm tying this back because he's speaking about your life in general. I'm just tying this back to investments, Bitcoin, stuff like that. You have to have your family ready. Like, hey, this is what we need. Here are the keys in case I die. And people are like, oh, man, we ain't no, it might happen. Here's the credit cards. Right. Here's this. Yeah. Here's that. Here's the silver. The handoffs. You yeah. have to have them done early. Even if you live to a ripe old age, you're still going to die one day. 
Yeah. Um, and I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll get with Cousin Rue because life has no meaning or purpose without death. And um, I think Cousin Rue could probably help me like put together the metaphysics behind it. Um, and one thing I like about how Cousin Rue, like how he do his shows and stuff and how he break down and explain stuff is he break it down to the finest. He almost does it like a metaphysical engineer. And I really appreciate that, um, that, that quality, that skill that he has when he's breaking down information. So I think I'm gonna bother you again, Cousin Rue, for us to do some type of show. We can still tie it back to Bitcoin some which way, shape or form, but to really talk about the um, importance of death because it is death that gives life purpose and meaning and yeah, and the know, permanence of the death the in the short span of life. The permanence of the death and also, uh, if you got to tie it back to Bitcoin, people better be transferring off handing off their Bitcoin yeah. or you're just getting it's more just lost, lost Bitcoin. Forever. And it's dead in a sense. Like it, there's a death there. there. It it's a death yeah. there. And so you got to make sure if you have some Bitcoin, I don't care how many socials you got, make sure somebody got access to them. Anything can happen tomorrow. You guys go down your timeline. People are dying at any Young age. people, young so people. Don't act like you're going to live to 100. You know, make sure that you're ready. Make sure that you're ready. Okay, it looks like BK Crypto saw my email. I hope. Oh, okay. um, T will line man for hire. He was talking about things like, man, my grandmother always told me, but now she's gone and you get it, right? And now the things she told you have more importance and more meaning than ever. Because you don't have the, you can't take advantage of the opportunity to just call her whenever you want to anymore. Mm -hmm. um, Bitcoin Shango says some generational values are great, some not so much agree. They <laughs> curses, right? They're not even values, they're just curses. Death was usually avoided in casual conversations. Now I speak to my sons about Bitcoin and how it's my love for them after I'm gone. Yeah, I think we're kind of waking up as a community and having more conversations. But I, I want I, I want to sit down with Cousin Rue and kind of figure out like wh where does that fear come from? Like where did that come from when the rest of the world embraces death and understands it to its metaphysical purpose and point? Why do we in the Western world, why do we run from it? Why do we yeah. shy? We don't talk about it. We don't want to say it. Like we're going to conjure up the spirit of death. You know, I, I cast that down in the name of the mighty yeah. Yahusha, the Black Madonna. Right. Dia de los Muertos. But yeah. my West African faith embraces death. We honor our dead. We pray to them and say how much we love and miss them. So the ancestors. Um, Cousin Ruth said, yeah, it's true, Western society. You're right, Brother Panic spoke on it. I think that the West does that because it makes people reckless consumers. That is a good perception of it to yeah. get you to kind of, that makes, I knew you would know, Cousin Ru, I knew you, you would know. <laughs> Panic was really good about speaking about death. The brother wasn't afraid, he was ready, thank goodness. He put out so much content. Yeah, Brother Panic, man, was a homie, man. I, I dealt with him since what? 2010, 2000. If anybody got a million hours of content, yeah. I bet he comes close. Yeah, so panic, I bet he man. Comes close. He got to, panic was the homie, man. But I think he knew, Rue, because didn't you see towards the end he was doing 9, 12, 14 hour show? I said, mm -hmm. you remember how long the shows were? But they're getting up to like eight hours and stuff. But, I think he had a show that was almost 11 hours. I missed that one, man. I, 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 and we I, used to have to watch it over the course of like a week, Cousin Rue, because it's right. <laughs> such a long show. You know, he used to get uh, sidetracked to talk about Marley Marr, The Bridge. For those of y'all who don't know Panic, Panic was a New Yorker who grew up in Queensbridge Projects. Everybody from Queens. <laughs> so he used to always get detracted and digress, and he used to be in love with Thelma from Good Times, so we got to hear it for the millionth time, the time that he met her. He was a hot mess. He was hilarious. Um, remember somebody called him Brother, Brother Pantry? Because he was always eating snacks. Oh, the other dudes. He used to eat the yeah. snacks all the time. But we are way over, way, way, way over. We love y'all so much. But we do want you guys to always have that heightened, um, baby is dead, that heightened sense of mind shift, perception, awareness, right? Create your boundaries. Like we talked about when we talked about the uh, the sand on the speaker, when you play the high frequency noise, some of those sand grains, a lot of them are going, they're not gonna conform to the high frequency 
shape and design. Is he crying? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're going to fall right off the speaker. And you have to let some of these people in your lives fall off the speaker. If they're not going to conform to your high vibration, they got to go. Right? Don't cash that check out to them with your time, with your energy, with your patience, with your knowledge. Right? We read in the Bible all the time. It is a book of wisdom. He says, do not cast your pearls before a swine. Right? They're going to eat it and poop it out. And you wasted your time when you could have given that to someone who sees the value in your pearls, in your wisdom, in your jewels. And will take it and implement it and change their life. Um, yeah, he said, my man loved those snacks. Yes, the gummies and stuff, right? Bitcoin Shango said, thank you. Have a great day. We love y'all. Um, today is Monday. We will see you guys on, on Wednesday. Wednesday. And definitely, this is day one of quarter two. It's not too late for you to implement the tool. Don't come here with all that crying. Um, this is a great time for you to implement day one of quarter two. 12-week year is simply using each week as a month, and you can get a lot of stuff done, or you can get a little bit of stuff done. You don't have to have this long list of goals. You can just have a small list of goals, one to five goals that you really want to work towards, and spend the quarter working towards those goals, right? But start practicing. Even if you don't get it right this quarter, keep practicing until you get to that quarter where you're like, okay, I know what I'm doing. I have my time management down. I have my resources down, right? I know who I'm cashing in time checks to, and I'm going to get some stuff done. I'm going to get the up-leveling that I'm looking for. I'm going to get the outcomes that I'm seeking. It's not too late. If you guys need anything from us, assets.arbitrage at gmail.com. Get your crypto swag from BK Crypto. That's our cousin. We want to support him. We talked about this. And um, definitely follow Bitcoin Shango if you guys are trying to stay up on all things um, crypto. Yeah. I would also follow Bitcoin Chris as well. That's the homie. That's the homie. I would absolutely follow those cousins. We love y'all. We want y'all to have a great evening.